just wanted to take a moment to introduce uh, Laurent Servo. He's the CTO of Zenly. So Zenly is uh, based in Paris, and they are one of the fastest growing startups in all of Europe. In fact, they just raised a massive fund, uh, or a massive round of funding, rather. And it's purely based on you know the not only the traction that they have, which is astronomical, but it's also largely based upon that they're leveraging some really serious skill and technology to help deliver a great a, a great service to their users. So today he's going to talk a lot about kind of how they take a lot of the principles and kind of the core things uh, that they believe in and how that's helped them to figure out how do they run their company at scale because certainly for a lot of startups for a lot of people that do that that are looking to figure out how do they continue to go through that journey of achieving product market fit and then once things start to take and you know all of a sudden you have these new first world problems that you got to figure out how do you how do you work with that and and he's going to talk to you guys a little bit about that so hope you enjoy thank you david so i'm laurent cto of zenly i think the introduction was really nice uh yes yeah, scaling so what does it mean scaling so it means about you start about five people in a garage or in a small room and then suddenly you're 40 and you try to remember, I mean, what you were doing when you were five and it was easier. And now you need to change and adapt yourself. Otherwise, it's going to be a mess. You know, that's it. So first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what Zenly is um, as an application, as a platform. And then, basically, I'm going to run about four topics that are, have been essential to us in the way that we've been growing. Topic about people, your team, you, uh, how do you scale your team, how do you make your team evolve. Talking about real life production, as you're going to see, Zenly is a real time platform, so this had a lot of implication in the culture of the company. Talking about the product, and also, I mean, end with this idea about okay, sometimes you believe you're here. I mean, uh, David was saying we have massive growth, uh, we raise a lot of money, and you s want to believe you're here, but in fact, I mean, the only thing that it's put on you is about, oh, now what's going to be the next step? And people are having high expectation on us, so we have to go from there. Zenly, uh, basically as a product, um, we just realized, I mean, a few years ago, the founder of the company realized that, I mean, the question that was asked the most often on a cell phone, just like you're calling someone, you're texting someone, you say, hey, where are you? What's up? What you're doing? Where can we meet? So it's all about where are you? And usually in the process, you're sending this message, you're waiting, and a few hours later, you may or not get an answer, and the answer may be valid or not. Just like, hey, I'm here, I'm on my way. I have no click, so I have to, to do it myself. So it's a process that was a little bit complicated, and basically because it was complicated, it was not frictionless. I mean, you have to go, you need to correlate the information when you send it, when you receive it, it was because it was asynchronous, imprecise, and passive. So what we wanted to do with Zenly is to go and say, OK, we need to erase this kind of question that you're having when you pick up your phone. We want to make a conversation on something else. So our vision is really about hey, we want to let you know where your friends are and what they are doing live. And depending on the context that we are bringing with the location of your friends, then we can have a social interaction with them that's going to be suited to this context. Personally, myself, now, I mean, I'm using Zenly. OK, that's kind of expected. Uh, and each time I'm, I, I want to I wanna call my wife, I want to text my wife, I just look where she is. And I know if I'm going to bother her or if I'm just going to be, this is going to be the right time, I mean, to, to call her or to, if I'm just instead, I mean, going to send, I mean, text message or some emojis to Zenly. I mean, we have this kind of emoji-based messaging system. We have very high ambition. We want to serve 2 billion people. So uh, that's kind of a third of the planet. So that's a lot of ambition. But this is really what we want to do. And this is what we're going to reach. To do this, I mean, basically, we have cracked utility. So we believe location sharing is becoming more and more a commodity, something that you do because it's useful. And you don't even start to ask questions about why you're doing it. But most of all, we have cracked the technology. I mean, we're not the first one to look into the LBS space. We are the first one who have made it so that we completely master the topic of background location sharing. We made it frictionless. We made it real time. So that's something essential when you want to know what's happening with your friend. We make it precise. Because obviously, I mean, if you're not interested to know if your friend is two kilometers away from where he is now. 
And most important of all, we developed a technology that allowed us to make it without killing the battery. So that kind of enabled us, that was the beginning, and I'm going to talk more about this, but that's enabled us to do, I mean, cool things, I mean, now and in the future. And today we have more than 2.3 million registered users. We launched in May, in May 2016, and we had approximately, I think it was a little bit, 1 million, around 1 million registered users. We are here. And we raised like 32 million. So if you think about successful startup, I mean, we're kind of having all the check marks that are going to bring us into the domain of successful startup. But with all these check marks, now, I mean, basically it says, okay, how do you go to the next step? And what are the expectations of the people who are invested in you? Because it's a nice thing. When I think about, uh, when I think about what it takes to me to, to, I mean, to run I mean, the technical part of this company, I'm sometimes having a comparison just like when I was younger and I was trying to, to be part of a band. And so, I mean, it's a bit like a startup. You know, how many bands did create in the garage? They start to play music and they dissolve before be having any kind of celebrity, usually for stupid reasons. Oh, that sounds very much like a startup. You know, you argue with your friends, you dissolve the startup, it's over, the dream's over, start again. Okay. When you think about a band, uh, something important about a band is about the identity of a band. Uh, when I was younger, there was this band, it was called The Cure. And not only they were having the music, but they were also having the hair like that. They were having the black dresses. It was not only about the music itself. For a startup, it's the same. Us, our identity, part of our identity is about real time. Real time because this is a service we propose, so it can be frictionless. But it has also implication on every part of the company. The users are expecting that they're going to have these real-time services because of the technology. And when there is a failure, they are expecting us to have a real-time answer when there is a failure. So we don't have a lot of failures. I mean, I'm lucky with this. But it had happened sometimes that, I mean, so some people say, hey, I'm not seeing my friend. It's a position about like 12 minutes ago. I'm not kidding. I'm going to quit this application. This is drastically bad. I'm not going to use you again. Hey, come on. We just had, I mean, it was like peak failure or something like that. But now, I mean, we're ready for this. So this real-time ID is having really an application to every part, I mean, of the company and every people inside the company. It's becoming like cultural mantra. A band is also about the people. So as usual in the band, I mean, everyone is counting. And every, every one of the times, you know, it's just like if I take, again, the musical comparison, I mean, how many guitar players were there in the Eagles? You know, like eight or nine of a time, you know, we don't care, but each time they are playing, it's still the Eagles playing, and each one has contributed to it. So in a startup, it's the same. You have people, they come, they go, they play a role. And it's important that, I mean, you are able to, I mean, to use the proper people for the proper role. Everybody has to play in unison. That's most than important in a startup. And when you're growing, you have to take care about this in a real, real deeper way. When you start your company and when you are like three, four, five, six, then some people will like, I mean, everybody will touch a little bit about anything. So you say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And that's good because you have this creativity from the beginning where you're kind of shaping also what's going to be your identity and your product. But as you're getting bigger, you have to understand that you can play everything, but you have to play with the goal of the company, the goal of the product, and the vision of the CEO. This is very much important. You also need to have people who can improvise. And this is even more important when you're going bigger. You think that when you're going bigger, I mean, you're going to stop improvising. But when you're going to going, to going bigger, I mean, you get, get more visibility. And so you have people suddenly they're going to call you and say, hey, do you want to do this partnership with us? And you say, oh, I will be fooled to say no. OK, say yes. And then you come back I mean, to the team and say, we have to do this for uh, tomorrow evening. OK, it's going to be fine. So it's very nice when you have people who are able to improvise this year. As a management, well, this also, I mean, growing is also putting a lot of, I mean, pressure and putting a lot of uh, importance on the management roles. First, I mean, you always need to be clear on the vision. You always need to choose the right note that people are going to play. But you also need to make sure that everybody that is coming to your team is going to be to find satisfaction in working in your team and your company. And they can, you can transmit them the ideas, the original ideas. And then they're going to take the ID and, I mean, make sure that the ID is going better. It is very important also that, I mean, you try not to do the job for them. 
It's kind of you're adding some people and you say, oh, I think we want to do this and sometimes say, it's not about you're going to pick your instrument and I'm showing you, it's like you're going to pick the keyboard and say, let me show you. I mean, don't do this. This is really a mistake. You're hiring people. They are clever people. I mean, you want to grow your company, let them do anything that they, can, they want to do. Organizing silence is also important. You have 40 people. You cannot kill 40 people or you cannot, I mean, exhaust 40 people all the time. It's important when you're having a release that sometimes you say to people, hey, you know, you're not going to be in the front line for this release. Then, I mean, you're going to be in your turn, it's going to be the next. That's it. If I talk about the team and I go into the musical uh, analogy, I mean, the team is all about putting a band together. We put back the band together, you know, like Blues Brothers stuff. There are kind of three things to do with the team. The first one is about hiring people, choosing people. There is also a change here. When you're a small company, you spend like four hours on hiring every two months. You say, you're going to say, I'm looking for, let's say, an iOS or an Android or a backend developer. You find one and you say, OK, I'm, 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 no, I'm fine for the next six to eight months. When you're growing, I mean, you need to get more and more people. But also, you need to make sure that everybody that is going to come in is going to fit with the cultural and the goal of the company. So suddenly, from four, four hours every two weeks or every month, you're moving to six hours of time of recruiting a day. So that's really taking a lot, I mean, when you're scaling from the management part to make sure you get the right people. You need to find them everywhere, find all the means to find them, being direct recruiters, being recruiting company, any kind of them, being uh, announce a stack overflow or anything. I don't want to make any advertising here. But basically, you need to widen your horizon about who you can hire so you can get, I mean, and many kind of people in your team. And hiring is a process where you always need to change it and reorganize it so it's suited to the type of people you want to hire. I mean, if, you want to, uh, if you're looking for beginner, you're going to look at certain kind of process. If you're looking for more people with more experience, senior people, you're not going to ask them some basic questions. It's going to be like insulting them. But still, you want to know that they're going to be able to prove that they're able to do what you want them to do. This time you're hiring also, I mean, be very straightforward. I mean, if it doesn't fit, tell the people it doesn't fit. Tell someone right away. I mean, don't go through the recruiter and say, hey, we don't like him, you know. Well, I don't want to tell the people why. I mean, you're going to help them for the future, and they have a good remembering about you. Once you get people in, you need to manage them, I mean, in a one-one -one manner. It's important not to judge people too fast. When I hire people, I usually consider that, I mean, it takes around six months to understand exactly who is someone. Because in six months, at the beginning, they try to be perform, and then there is this moment when it gets, okay, maybe I'm easy now, I've proven it, and then there is a rush. And then you see really what people are doing when it's happened after the part where they want to shine and brighten. So give some time to people and have some kind of indulgence here. Also, be very clear as a manager about your expectation. Or, or, and when people decide to do something, just be happy about it. Even if it fails, even if they do a mistake, initiative is always the best thing. If you're growing, you want to have people responsible. You want that everybody is taking their own part. So you need to accept the initiative about people. You also need to organize I mean, everybody in a coherent manner. So basically, it all depends about how much people you're having in your company. When you're at the beginning, you say, OK, you're going to organize people by uh, their uh, expertise. This is going to be the infrastructure guy. It's going to be the back-end guy. It's going to be the mobile iOS, mobile Android, where anything you can think. As your company is developing, this model is not scaling. If you want to scale, you need to organize people by function, by feature squad. This is what we, we call them I mean, inside Zenly. Because then it makes people, it groups people from different kind of team of uh, expertise. It makes them together and it focuses them on one goal of the company. It's very easy to get, I mean, usually it's around when you get 15 to 20 people and you start to have, I mean, this kind of division where people are just like, hey, I'm late because of the back end team, they didn't provide me the API. So this is normal, we are two weeks late and it's not my fault. You need to kill this right away. I mean, it's very, very surprising as sometimes, I mean, from this part, when you start to go around 15, 20, I mean, people are just trying to get scared about, oh, what's happened if I do a mistake? Hey, it's okay, you can do a mistake, just let's organize ourselves so we can work together. 
and of course people need to report between this all these feature squad they need to make sure you have I mean very very fluid communication it's a very important role for a manager ensuring everyone is on the same line if you go at the end of the day and you're asking to the people okay what was your goal for the day you may get like 40 different answers okay we have a team and now that we have this team in place, I mean, we need to go into production. Okay. Production, I take it in a general term. Production for me, I mean, if I go still to my music analogy, it was is giving the groove, the beat of the company. If it stops, the company is dying. If it co and then if it's, if it's here, then basically it's rolling, and then you can have some kind of singer or some kind of lead player, I'm going to talk more about this stuff, which is a product running on top of production. In the case of Zenly, we have a main constraint. It has to be fast. It's real time. To be fast, I mean, you have also to change your ID. And I think, as before said, pick the right language for the right tools and for the right usage. This is exactly what's happening when you're growing. We started off by doing our server and backend in Python. We are now in Go. This is what makes the most sense in real time. And so you need always to adapt and say, okay, don't be a fanatic about your choice from the beginning. Don't be totally like this is gonna be a sect about this choice of the beginning because it may change with time and you need to integrate anything that is coming. Spend also time about your infrastructure. Spending time on your infrastructure is not only about having all the nice things so it can run and be elastic and everything. It's about if there is a problem, you can put it back fast on track. And that was the most important. If you're at the beginning of a startup and you have a down, and it has happened to everyone, and it will happen to everyone in the early stage of the startup, then, I mean, okay, you can play just like it needs two hours and you need to relaunch everything uh, manually and you need to do this so it's back, home, back up. I mean, you had a talk, there was a talk before about Kubernetes. This is a kind of tool that are really useful because, hey, if something's down, it goes up right away and we don't, we don't even have to worry. So that's important. Production for me goes to the client part. Everybody thinks about production is a server thing, but most important, it's also something, I mean, the path between the client and the server. If you think about the analyst, it's somebody opening a phone and they want to get the position in real time of somebody else's phone. So everything goes through server, client, and a lot of things inside the server. So you have to think everything, all the complete paths about production. Production is one thing, but something important, and as you're growing, you have to put more intention into it. It's just like what's circulating into your system? What type of information is here? And it's all about the data. At Zenly, we used to build, and at the beginning, we were focused about getting the API correctly and getting the server answering and the protocol correctly. Now, I mean, our focus has shifted, <coughs> and it's more about, okay, how can we get this data pipeline? And we did put in place a data pipeline inside the complete company. So every data that is circulating can be used by any kind of team not only about the real-time service and the client, but also about they're gonna be system computing metrics and computing statistics. It's gonna to go to the AI team, data science, so they can apply some algorithm. And they need also to put them back into the loop so it can be used in real time by the system. So architecturally, uh, from an architectural point of view, I mean, it's better this way, uh, being able to, scaling is also decide you're gonna change the paradigm of what you're having. So, it's getting more and more about this huge bus of data, so you can get all data pipeline here, and everybody can use it in a, ready, in a, um, in a nice way. Okay. Getting data right is most often about getting definition of data right. That's always a problem you're having when you start to have multiple teams dealing with the same kind of data. Everybody starts to make their own interpretation. Everybody say, okay, this is going to represent, I mean, we have this object that is kind of representing a position, which is basic element in Zendy. It's, not, it's more complex than a simple position. And we have this object, and we want to make sure that the definition for this object is the same inside every component of the company. That is, inside the server, inside the mobile, inside the data science team, and not everybody, we don't want to have everybody having their own variation, and then when you try to connect things together, then it's not working. 
we found a solution. It was funny. We found a solution because one of our VP of engineering was he, uh, did an internship at Google and say he, he told us, oh, everybody at Google is using these protobuf things where you have this model definition and generated in all languages. Okay, fine. We take it. No problem here. Yeah. So sometimes, I mean, you need to, to go and dig into, I mean, some external stuff to make sure that's going to help you on the way. Finally, the last part about production is about monitoring. Zenly is a real-time system. So as a real-time system, if it's having a failure, well, you need to be able to record the real-time failure. Because otherwise, I mean, doesn't work for me. Uh, OK, it works for me. I mean, how many times do you have in your team, like, this works on my computer, you know? We are all in Zenly's office in Paris. This is cool offices. And then we see message on the support that say, hey, it's not working. Oh, no, it's working for me. Of course, we have high-speed internet. We are close to the people doing it. So fine, it's going to work. So don't hesitate to log everything. Don't hesitate to tell your engineering team about logging everything, even if it sounds, I mean, like stupid or too much. The idea that I'm going to log only errors is something that is not working when you're growing and you're dealing with a real-time system. You also need to spend time in support. From the beginning, put a support team, I mean, uh, support system in place. It's very interesting because you start to read the support. At the beginning, you don't care. You say, OK, somebody's going to take care about me. But then you're forcing the people in the engineering team to read support. And I say, I never thought people would think about this. I never thought people would do this with the application. You know, it's kind of very surprising and very enlightened to anyone. Invest in your own tool. Of course, you need to use external tools. I mean, you're not going to create some data visualization metrics yourself unless they are very specific. But for the core of your business, you need to invest in creating something that is suited to you. And of course, make sure everybody is aware about metrics. Usually, the first part, when we, when we have a problem, and we, I mean, in the past, because we don't have a lot of problems those days in production, the first part was about a change in metrics. And we started to notice, why did we have, I mean, this slight 2%, 5% less than we expected as new user on the, uh, yesterday? And then, you know, you're always tempted to say, oh, it's a normal variation. I mean, we had such a huge growth. Sometimes it's not, can, it, can, it can happen. We don't have it. No, it was always a bug. It's always a bug. You have to think about it. Once you have the groove, I mean, then you need to have somebody play lead. So it can be a singer. I'm not a singer. I mean, so this is why I'd say bad guitar. And in a startup analogy, I mean, it's going to be the product. The evolution of the product when you're scaling is, in fact, something that you need to control. Uh, I've been going through a few startup experience, and every time there was this thing about you do the first screenshot and you do the first mock-up, I mean, in the first months of the startup. Then you develop your thing, it's getting bigger, you add new features to the product, and then suddenly, I mean, it starts to be completely cluttered and nobody can use it. And you find back the switch up, you, screenshot you've been doing like 14 months ago, and you say, hey, that was cool, we need to do it again. So it's very important, I mean, to stick to the primitives of your product. That's, if you want to play, I mean, correctly, if you want always to shine and not be like buried in the mass of all the rest evolving. I mean, be very clear on this. This is your identity. For Zenly, this is easy. I mean, this is where are my friends, and I need to communicate with my friends. This stuff needs to scale also. I mean, it's scaling because number of users. I mean, Zenly was not thought at the beginning to have like people with 250 friends into Zenly. So of course, we had to change the product, but we need to stick to the primitives. This primitive can also, should also be translated, I mean, to the complete team. We're having an emoji-based system of communication in Zenly. I mean, there are emoji all around the place, I mean, in our of areas, offices. OK. Getting feedback on your products is important. So of course, you need to get real life testing, go in the street. And as you're growing, go more often in the street and ask people. And also make sure that everybody who's working in the company is using the product for himself or herself. When you get someone at the hiring process and you ask this person, OK, do you use my product? And if they say, no, uh, I'm just here to work on your product, stop the discussion right away. It takes two minutes to explain them properly and move to the next person. If somebody is not using your product, you cannot scale. If an employee is not using the product, everybody with their own needs and their own way of using it, I mean, you cannot scale. So that's something very important. 
of course, once again, to get feedback, look into support. And when you look into support, be sure you're looking at the right type of information. It's very easy to look at some metrics and to say, oh, this one are always growing. And you're not looking at the right one, which is showing how you do in reality. Quality is also changing as you're scaling. When you at the beginning of your company, quality is about, I have no crash. Oh, my app is having no crash, I'm happy. When you have, I mean, a lot of people using it and you have people who are invested in you, I mean, quality is about you need to start fast, you need to work in every network condition, you need to be, I mean, basically it's always, you need to always to be on the first page of your telephone. I mean, if people are installing Zenly, Zenly needs to be on the first page of the iOS or Android phone. This has to be your criteria of quality. This is not about no crash. No crash or one person crash is absolutely um, something that is, it should be not a problem. One person crash when you're having two million users, well, that's a lot of users. So you have to teach to the people inside your team that this is not what's important. What's important is just like, you have a product, the life cycle when you're gonna use it, it's gonna be 20 seconds maximum. So be sure that people can open the product eight times a day with 20 seconds and everybody's gonna be satisfied and dig into the de details. Don't hesitate to change your work environment, like cut the Wi-Fi in the office. So that's going to make people, I mean, having to deal with more drastic conditions. Finally, as a last part, I will talk about commitment. Well, commitment is about working always and always, and also finding way about when you need to stop. You probably have heard it about many times in a startup. I mean, you don't make a startup in one day and suddenly you appear. I mean, this year, Zenly, we're having huge growth. We are, I mean, we had a nice article, a lot of people talking about us. We are more than four years old. And nobody is really saying this. And we spent two years on the technology to understand this frictionless, non-battery consuming location sharing things. I had to crack it. So it really takes time. So that's very important. If it takes time, you don't have to time to be spent, I mean, on small problem. I was take, speaking like a band, you know, at the beginning. I can't play with this guy. He doesn't understand me. He did let me take the lead. I mean, he made a solo. I, well, I should have made a solo, whatever. Please forget all this. If you want to scale, no time on grudge. It's a kind of learning, life learning experience. Okay. You will have high, you will have lows. The difference is always about this in this little extra that you are going to do. So this little extra, this is okay, do something to, today and don't do it tomorrow. If you have an ID and you go home and it's like 11.30 p.m. and you think about the ID is gonna be fine, I mean, please do it now and try it now. If you're working with people in different continents, just like people in the United States, don't wait for the next day to ask a question and wait for the answer. Go to bed at 1 a.m. Well, 1 a.m. is 5 p.m. in California, you know? I mean, you're going to have people answering to you here. And suddenly, you're going to gain 48 hours. This is the type of thing that are making the little extra. If you're working with people and people say, I spend a lot of time, explain them that it's not about time. It's about focus and energy. Time is only a metric where, OK, everybody can spend time. These are clever people. If they put energy in, then they're going to have success. And this is what's the most important to bring to your team. When you're getting 40 people, some think, some people can think that, okay, it's going to be easy. I can have not to do this little extra because we're going to get more. No, you have to teach everyone to do this little extra and to be able to pass the little extra from one to, in, to each other to another when they're having changes, I mean, as you're doing and developing, sorry. Finally, the last part is about stay cool. That's also something you need to, to learn when you scale. At the beginning, it's cool, it's a startup. I mean, when you start to have a lot of users, a lot of investment, a lot of everything, well, you're not cool at all. I mean, you kind of, some people, you're not sleeping well at night, so train yourself, you know? Stop everything, make sure that, I don't know, every Sunday you're not working. That's very important for your mind. And as you're scaling, it's even more important. You also need to accept your role is not gonna be the same, and it's evolving with the company. Two years ago, I was programming, and I did develop the algorithm. I'm spending time now, but be sure that everybody in the team is understanding what are the principles and the fundamentals of Zenly. I mean, this is not my job to show that I can program. I know it, everybody knows it, doesn't matter, you know. Take care about the people also. 
So American, I mean, uh, I used to work in America, and they have this fantastic thing, it sounds simple, which is one-one meeting. You know, you spend like 30 minutes with each people of your, of your team, like every week or so every two weeks, one hour. It's not always in the European culture. You know, how many companies are having just like, oh, I'm going to have my yearly meeting with my manager and he's going to tell me in December if what I've done in last January was good. In a startup, it's very important to have this because in a startup, you tend to believe, especially at the beginning, that everybody knows themselves, so they know what information is here and everybody's cool. But uh, you're not everybody is not cool. I mean, sometimes you sit with someone and suddenly in closed door, they are telling you, hey, I'm having some pressure, I don't like this, I'm not feeling recognized, whatever, and you need to solve it. And especially as you're growing, you need to spend a lot of time on this. It's kind of a marathon training, so that's all. I think that's it, and uh, thank you for listening.